here on the Kirby Couch, we've got Indiana Governor Mike Pence, who would uh, like to be the next Vice President of the United States. And you were giggling, you were giggling looking at those uh, images of those kids. We well, actually... I, I was too when I walked down the hallway. I mean, that's where you... <laughs> <laughs> I want to stop in for a. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what Mike Pence would look like as a cowboy and his wife as a ladybug. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. When okay. was that? Yeah. <laughs> that was last year for yeah. Halloween. Wow. Yeah, the governor's residence. It's one of the great traditions in Indiana. We we uh, Karen and I pass out candy at the governor's residence. Are you doing uh, it this year? Can you dress up as the VP candidate? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to happen this year <laughs> with sure all of our travels. Time, right? but, uh, but it's it's a great tradition. I love Halloween. I really do. How are you feeling after last night's scare on the runway? Uh, we're great. Thanks for asking. Uh, we just had a um, we we had about 10 seconds of uncertainty at the end of that landing, uh, but uh, just uh, so thankful, uh, so thankful to uh, our pilots and frankly to the first responders. Uh, the the plane had no sooner come to a stop that I felt like we were surrounded mm -hmm. uh, by first responders. So by uncertainty, who were on the do you mean terror? No, it was just uncertainty, Tucker. We we came down. It was a low ceiling. Uh, we landed, but it was I think obvious to everybody on the plane that uh, that they were hitting the brakes very hard, uh, trying to bring the aircraft to a stop. Uh, we fishtailed a little bit, and then and then uh, we passed through that part where the concrete breaks apart. The arrestor blocks. And then we saw, you know, I, I saw mud splash up on the windows on either side of the front of the aircraft, and uh, that's when I knew we were probably that off off the runway but you know our, our son is a Marine Corps aviator and uh, uh, he says all the time uh, dad you know any landing you walk away from is a successful landing so we, we feel uh, very fortunate and uh, and very moved frankly by the outpouring of concern for sure. us and our family and our staff and all the people that I was were on impressed the plane. you were on the tarmac shaking hands with all the first responders well I was I was, I was very impressed with them uh, I mean they were literally Ainsley they were on the scene Almost before the plane stopped uh, rolling, uh, and uh, you know, got everybody off uh, very easily and very quickly. And um, I, I just felt uh, I felt the opportunity to to shake their hands and give them a word of encouragement. Yeah, it. Uh, we just had a local reporter on who said the preliminary uh, assessment is that the pilot may have landed a little a little too far down the runway and yeah. overshot things. Well, well, I mean, we'll, we'll leave that you know, to the experts. Right. And, uh, but, uh, but I can just tell you, we're, um, you know, we, we have a saying in our family that the safest place in the world is to be in the center of God's will. Uh, so we, were, we, we, we had no anxiety throughout all of it. Um, uh, I, I turned to Karen after the plane came to a stop. I asked her if she's okay. She's a pilot. She said, I'm fine. And uh, we're back on the campaign trail today. We'll be in Pennsylvania, be in North Carolina, and looking forward to getting getting back out there and telling the story of the man I hope becomes sure. the next president of the United States. Well, maybe on Monday on Halloween you could dress up as a, a pilot, <laughs> well, flight attendant. Well, my my wife is the pilot and our son's a pilot, so okay, she'll be the pilot. You'll be somebody the flight did, attendant. Somebody did send me a picture of a little boy that dressed up for Halloween as Mike Pence. And so, <laughs> so, were you flattered? I, I was actually I was actually very. So, flattered. You're, you're so busy running for for VP. You're probably not reading all the WikiLeaks emails, but I want to read you a line, and I want you to tell me, is this uttered by a Republican or a Democrat? And it's a quote. Do we actually know who told Hillary she could use a private email? And has that person been drawn and quartered? The whole thing is blanking insane. I'm going to give it away. That's from Neera Tandon, former head of the uh, Center for American Progress and a close aide to Hillary. Her own aides are saying this is nuts. Well, it, look, and, it, and it's not not just the decision to have a private server. It's that while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State in charge of all of America's foreign policy, she had a private family foundation that was taking money from foreign governments and, and foreign donors, and then had a private server, presumably to keep all of the traffic and dialogue about all of that out of the public reach. But as as I say at our rallies, truth is a force of nature. Uh, this information is coming out, not just by WikiLeaks, but by freedom of information requests and some good journalism around the country. And what the American people are seeing more and more is just the kind of pay-to-play politics where, where donors were giving to, to their foundation and then were given special consideration for contracts to rebuild Haiti, where we, we see now this what's being called Clinton Incorporated, where donors to the foundation, many 
many of whom were lobbying the State Department were also hiring former President Bill Clinton. And this is, this is just the kind of pay-to-play politics that the American people are tired of, benefits the favored few, and it's the kind of politics that will end the day that Donald Trump becomes President of the United States. Well, a lot of people are disgusted when they see the stories about WikiLeaks. Unfortunately, there aren't that many channels that are covering them. That's right. And you were talking about uh, good journalists. There are not, not a lot of uh, print reporters who are doing it. And to a lot of people, mainly on your side, it looks like uh, the press is in the tank for her. Well, I think it, you know, since I joined this campaign, it's it's been two on one um, with the with the mainstream media doing most of Hillary Clinton's work for her every day. We just saw Media Research Center came out with a study that the network evening news mm -hmm. over the last three months that Donald Trump had gotten the majority of coverage, but 91% of the coverage of my running mate had been negative. But I have to tell you, the momentum in this campaign is incredible. I was campaigning with Donald Trump in Cleveland over the weekend, tens of thousands of people coming out, uh, and even rallies that I'm doing across the West and, and across the heartland this week. We'll have hundreds and hundreds of people come out. The American people know we can be stronger. They know we can be more prosperous, but they know it's gonna take real change in the White House and a change of direction and leadership to do that. And and, and that's why I think we're, we're seeing so many Republicans, independents, and many Democrats uh, preparing to stand with and voting for so Donald Trump as the next president. So it seems to be closing a little bit the polls in, in, a, in a way that benefits you all. And I heard yeah. someone say yesterday, maybe it's because Trump seems to be talking less about himself and more about the issues. Do you think that's a, a fair assessment? I, I don't think that's fair. I think from from the beginning of this campaign, Donald Trump has been giving, giving voice to the frustrations and the aspirations of the American people like no one in my lifetime since Ronald Reagan and and you've seen that not only in the convention where he talked about he talked about standing up for the forgotten men and women in this country and then week after week where the other campaign it seems like has been more focused on uh, what they don't like about our team uh, Donald Trump has been out there almost every day laying out the kind of policies that will make America great again. What is he going to do in the next 11 days? I, I think it's, I think what you're going to see is, is Donald Trump uh, and I both out all across this country uh, carrying that positive, optimistic message that we can make America great again uh, straight to the American people. Uh, I, I think, you know, to, to understand this, this uh, campaign, to understand uh, our nominee is to understand that this is a movement of the American sure. people, and we both believe as we continue to carry that message all across this country, the American people are, are going to make America great again. Well, 11 days is the final voting, and uh, the news this morning is that uh, South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, who had kind of backed away from you guys for a while, now says she's going to vote for you. What's your message to Republicans who, whether they were never Trumpers or whatever, they said, you know, I, I don't know. Ultimately, they go into that voting booth in a couple of Tuesdays, oh, two Tuesdays from now. What do they need to think about that? Well, uh, look, uh, n number one, I, I, my respect for Governor Haley is, is boundless. She's done a great job in South Carolina. We're grateful for her support, uh, grateful for Congressman Chaffetz's expressed support mm -hmm. earlier this week. I, I think you're seeing Republicans and conservatives come together uh, around uh, around the Trump Pence team, but also also just around our message of change, of, of, of rebuilding our military, of reviving our economy through tax relief, repealing Obamacare, smarter and tougher trade deals, repealing all those unconstitutional executive orders Barack Obama's put into law. And I think you're especially seeing Republicans and conservatives recognizing uh, that, that we want a Supreme Court and appointments to the Supreme Court that will uphold uh, our most cherished liberties in the Constitution. Constitution. That's going to take electing Donald Trump as president of the United States, but it's also going to take re-electing Republican majorities mm -hmm. in the United States House and in the United States Senate. And so my message as I've traveled around this week is, is we're grateful for the support from many independents who are tired of gridlock, grateful for the support of many Democrats who are tired of seeing our jobs shipped overseas and liberal policies. Yep. But also my message to any Republicans is it's time to come home. Mm -hmm. It's time to elect Donald Trump as the next president. It's time to re-elect our Republican majority and it's time to do everything in our power to make sure that Hillary Clinton is never elected president of the United States. All right, Governor. Governor Thank Mike you. Pence. Thank you. We wish you all the best you, over Thank the next you. 11 days. Thank you. Coming up, Adam Klotz is getting ready for the...